My name is David Frick and I'm a social studies teacher at West Lynn High School. We're located in the Pacific Northwest of West Lynn um, in Oregon. Four years ago during my first year as a teacher at West Lynn, a group of students uh, showed interest in attending a speech by Bono. I think that they were just blown away by his stage presence. He certainly is a rock star. After seeing Bono speak, the students rallied around the idea of starting a club, and they chose the name GATA, uh, the acronym being Global Awareness Take Action. Hi, my name is Chelsea Spitzer, and I was the first president of GATA. Bono spoke about fair trade issues and um, causes in Africa that needed attention toward. He made it more real that life is bigger than just America. He made the idea of service on a global level tangible even to a high school student. It was really, like, the first thing that really struck me was how many kids my age were there. It, there was a lot of high school involvement. And, um, I mean, seeing other people affect change was something that really inspired me. Also hearing him speak about third world debt and hearing about the uh, atrocities that people are enduring in daily life around the world was a little hard to just sit there and not do anything about. So that's what really inspired me to found GATA and start kids in my community to become aware of these issues and affect change on a personal level. Act, think global, act local. When GATA started, we really started with a number of small awareness campaigns that were really designed just to get people to think and to think about more than themselves, to think about the world around them, to think about how their personal actions had an impact on people around the world. We just showed PowerPoints to, to classes and to the school about AIDS or about chocolate and uh, fair trade and uh, slavery in uh, cocoa plantations in West Africa. And from there, um, GATA really exploded. GATA stands for Global Awareness Take Action. The first part of it was, um, it's an entirely operative acronym that um, I mean, global awareness, becoming aware, is a process that takes many people a lifetime. So I thought it was a clever way to get our um, youth, like a really dynamic force of people, to let their voice be heard and take action on the issues that they feel are most pressing in the world, particularly. I think our freshman year, our uh, major goal was uh, to stop, to, to like get some kind of AIDS awareness, especially, and fair trade awareness by selling fair trade chocolate in school, which was a plus. Two years ago, um, David Frick approached me and asked if it would be okay if his club, Global Awareness Take Action, um, if they could begin a sister school relationship between Westland High School and a secondary school in Kenya. And um, of course, when he asked me that question, um, I thought that would be a great idea. Uh, but I think I imagined um, uh, letters being written back and forth and, or emails uh, and pictures exchanged. Um, and probably never in my wildest imagination uh, could I have dreamed that we would begin a relationship that would bring uh, five students and their principal and one of their teachers um, from that school um, here to Westland High School. Well, gentlemen, I think I'll first have to honor and give my thanks to the two or to the concerned parties because it's a great honor to be chosen a school like this one. Why didn't he go to Nairobi and choose any other school? Why didn't he go to Nakuru and choose any other school? Why come to him? It shows how significant we, we are to him, how much we hold in his heart. And gentlemen, it shows how much love he holds for us. Gata got involved in a sister school project when we met Grace Kudo from Kenya. So we connected um, Westland and Namola Secondary School. Um, when, the, when both schools were ready, uh, it was just a natural for both schools. So when they took off, uh, it was like lightning. We, <laughs> we couldn't stand in the way. It was just like a tornado. The kids took off with their energy, and it was just amazing. They started off with a pen pal relationships, and hundreds and hundreds of letters went back and forth. It was an amazing opportunity for students at Westland to hear the life stories and to hear the experiences, and especially the similarities of um, the human condition from our very affluent Westland community to a community that's very different 
in Kenya. The students put a lot of energy into um, fundraising, making students aware of the connections that were available from uh, students in West Lynn with this community and culture in Kenya. And that inspired a lot of students to join in. And not all of the students were going to be picked to go on the trip. There were 12 ambassadors from West Lynn that were going to be chosen to go. But we had uh, a number of students working on fundraiser, fundraising projects. We had a battle with the bands. We had a, tra a uh, plant and tree sale. Um, we sold t-shirts and chocolate and bracelets and all kinds of different things. And ultimately, we ended up raising about $25,000, $15,000 for structural improvements to the school and $12,000 for this ambassador program. It was very valuable to hear about how people in other countries perceive us as Americans. And it was also a good opportunity for them to sort of talk to uh, people from another country about how we perceive from our media and from what we, we hear and are told about people in, in Africa. What we found was that neither perception was completely accurate. And by having that person-to-person, real-life experience of meeting and, and sharing ideas and talking about experiences together, um, that was really, really valuable. The first component of the exchange um, that we had planned was to have Westland students visit Kenya during the summer. And um, after spending five months learning elementary Swahili and getting all of our vaccinations, to go on this trip, we, uh, we were very disappointed and saddened to learn that um, because of some ongoing conflict and violence in Kenya, uh, we would be unable to go on the trip. After a couple days, the, the situation really sunk in for us, but we, we transitioned really into a number of discussions about how we could turn that difficulty into an opportunity. The kids, I think, had a lot of resilience. They said, we still have this $12,000. Let's take that and do something positive with it and really committed to the idea of uh, an academic exchange program. They channeled that money into an ambassador program to receive students from Namwella here at Westland High School. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, the Kenyan exchange students are here. Wow. And as the president of the student body, I'd like to give them a warm, sweet, delicious cookies out of the oven. Welcome. Here's Michael and Bernard speak. All right, guys. We just want to really say welcome to these guys. Um, this has been like three years in the working, and we're just really happy to have them here and have the opportunity to meet them, have the experience of a cross-cultural exchange. We just really encourage all of you to talk to these guys, um, get to know them, take advantage of this. This is a huge opportunity for us as a school. Um, just really happy to have them here. Make them feel at home. Hi. I'm uh, Geoffrey Amunga. I'm glad to be here. I'm uh, glad to be in Wesleyan High School. I'm finding that uh, you are so good, welcoming, and uh, I'm happy about that. I welcome you in Kenya. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, I'm Kemi Edwin from Kenya. I'm in the 11th grade. We will meet many of you. I hope you know me. I'm glad to be here with you. I'm in the 10th breath. I'm 16 years old. And I'm very excited. I don't know how to I don't know how to put it into words, but it's only God who knows inside my heart how happy I am to be with you. You're welcoming. Thank you very much for your appreciation. Okay. Hi guys, I'm 
Daisy Nafula from, from Kenya, and I'm 17 years old in the 11th grade, and I'm actually honored to be here. Okay, in Kenya, to, uh, the youths are used to greet each other. They say, Nyaje, and you respond, Poa. <laughs> okay, that's how the youths are uh, used to greet each other. Okay, I can greet you and you respond, Poa, Nyaje. <laughs> that's nice. Okay. Oh, I'm also the class president in our school, and I find this place to be very good. We are here to teach you about Africa, particularly I'm conversant with East Africa, which consists of the three countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania. If you have any question about those countries, I'm here to help you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Teacher, I'll not say Niaje, I'll say good morning. <laughs> I am Irene. This is Irene, the student. I'm Irene, the teacher. I teach in Namuela Secondary School. My voice is not very nice, uh, but I'm happy to be here for the cultural exchange. Uh, we want to sing a number, a song. Uh, to encourage our sister school relationship. Uh, in the song we are saying, let us not give up on each other. That is the message in the song. Let us not give up on each other. We want this relationship to continue for many years. And that would be nice for all of us. Kenya, at the time they were here, it was the hottest season of the year. Here it is the coldest season of the year. They could not believe how cold this place could be. <laughs> They've studied about seasons in geography, but you know, they, they, they expressed, they said, well, they, they, they didn't think that was true, you know. And fortunately, it also snowed while they were here. I cannot even <laughs> express how, <laughs> how they reacted to that. It was just incredible. The building a science lab for, for the kids, you know, at, uh, at Namula Secondary School. They're also doing a water project. Uh, according to the UN statistics, 80% of the diseases in Africa, or more than 80%, are from water. Uh, last year, the school had to close school because of uh, an outbreak. Of, of cholera 
through the, the fundraising at Westland, uh, the kids have been able to raise enough money to fund a, water, um, a borehole you know, for water. Uh, what they've done, I don't believe that we adults could have even done in the amount of time that they've done it. Um, just the energy they bring to each other. Uh, the visit from Namuela Secondary School to Westland was much bigger than we ever anticipated in terms of the experience itself, the way, the way it touched the human hearts in this community, in the Westland community, the host families, just the way they connected with Africa. Sachi, have you not met Edwin before? No, no, we're BFFs. You are BFFs? The courtesy among the people in this country was quite amazing to them. Um, of course, they came with their own stereotypes, you know, about America. So this really helped them see the humanity in this country. When they uh, sat into a session of um, Joint Ways and Means Committee of the Legislature of Oregon and saw how issues are debated and saw how issues are decided on and saw how these legislatures respected each other no matter what, even when they disagreed, they still thanked each other, they still um, honored each other. Once the Westland community really um, got the great news that, that they were coming and welcomed them and embraced them, then we found out um, that the elections over in Kenya were, were going really, really poorly. And then you asked this basic question, well, what are we going to do? We didn't, want to, we didn't want to let them go back. Ultimately, obviously, um, it's the best interest. They want to go home. They want to meet their family. They want to make sure their family is uh, safe. And we have good news in that we've been able to communicate with all of them. And we know that they're back. We know that they've made it back to Tuele and Namuela. And even that school is starting up. But there is a great uncertainty in terms of like um, what the future of Kenya is going to look like. In my estimation, that just makes the Sister School project even more valuable in as much that we can do uh, what we can to support uh, our new friends at the Sister School. When I came here, I visited the Nike campus and I learned that one can have very many job opportunities globally. Like now I've changed my mind from to being a journalist to a chief executive officer CEO. It's really not just about projects or activities. It has really been a human experience for, for the students. This year I had the incredible privilege and opportunity to host um, Edwin, Kemi Edwin, from uh, Kenya. And he stayed with me at my home for about five to six weeks. And it was a really incredible experience. I'm just amazed at, how, at, the, at the maturity of these kids in what they bring to the table for Gadda. And so I'm, I'm very hopeful that they'll be able to pass this inspiration on 
to other students? Some of the things, probably the most important things that I learned through this experience was just the vast amount of similarities that different um, countries and people from uh, all around the world, we all share the same sort of deep humanity that you can just, you know, throw two people in a room and they can never, you know, they might never have known each other before, might speak different languages, but there's some similarities there that are on a really deep human level that is really incredible to see. Part of my goal and the club, GATA, and David Frick, the sponsor, the advisor of that club, really want to get the message out to, to um, other schools and districts that you can do this. It isn't an insurmountable task, although there is a lot to do to make this happen. Um, it is the most worthwhile thing that you can have, have your school and your um, school community be involved in. I want especially to give a special education to Wesley High School. You are a school with a difference. We have many public schools, but there's something special in that school. That desire, that interest among the teachers, the administration and the students, and to reach out to the rest of humanity and in every possible way to assist one another and to create an opportunity to learn from one another is what's gone down in the history books. One of the really exciting benefits of the exchange program has it, is that it has given Westland students the opportunity to, um, to really experience other people. And it makes the world and the conditions of other people around the world so much more tangible when they can just sit down one-on-one -on -one and have a conversation. We really believe as GATA that change is enacted at a personal level and it's people sitting down and talking together that uh, has a great impact to change the world. Wale wantu marinio Macho yake ya nazunguka Uli mwengu wote Kuwane shangu vuzake Wale wantu marinio